Hello and welcome to the United Adventure Company. Today is Tuesday, so it is Weird Day. Yay, we're here to play weird. Um, I believe we're going to try and experiment to show you a trailer that my wife had put together for the game. So, Laura Thorne is our producer, stream master. Take that away. And there it is, everybody. All right. That was pretty cool. My wife made that, so I did some of the art that was in it. She she like surprise did it. She did it while I wasn't looking. Right. This is like surprise. Oh, okay. So, um, let's see. I think for business news for the United Adventure Company, uh, yesterday we did a announcement thing. I, I can talk about that now, right? I'm not yes. supposed to plug that, right? Okay. It's going to be a rebranding, and we're going to start streaming over on YouTube. Um, you can check out the Discord. There is links and stuff to all that. Well, and I don't want to give you any misinformation, so I'll wait. I'll let Discord tell you all that. Um, and of course, if you wanted to see that trailer again, that's on the Charisma Kills YouTube. It's called Charisma Kills TV. So, again, I'm Jesse, a.k.a. Ego Rabbit uh, Matches, and your host for Weird, Creator of Weird. And with us, we have Laura Thorne, who, like I said, is the producer and stream master for us for Waking Even Newsome. We have two wolf, two wolf, two wolf is coming in. Actually, Laura Thorne, you're coming in with a new character right. as well. Two wolf is coming in with a new character, and then we have Diamond, okay. also known as the Clip Master Supreme for the United Adventure Company. And not really. Diamond is playing David Remo, mm -hmm. who is the sole survivor, except oh. for one NPC of the last game. Lord Thorne and Two Wolf will be coming in with a new one. So, are there any questions? Should we do a recap? Uh, I mean, it'll be a really, really, yeah, let's go ahead and do a really brief recap. If you want to see it, I believe it's up on the United Adventure Company YouTube channel. But at the end, there was a terrible, terrible situation where they, our, our party had stayed past. Sun sunset and evil dog monsters attacked them. Dog monsters named Agamemnon and Hannibal. They fought them boldly on the bravely on the deck of the Newsome Island house, which they had actually anticipated to do and had wired the bridge, the bridge, the dock to explode. Well. Jerry, who had already sustained an injury from walking into a shotgun, had decided to, uh, they're going to stay and fight the good fight. When it, all boiled, when it all boiled down to it, uh, Hannibal had ripped Jerry's arm out of the socket. Jerry had blacked out unconscious. He technically was still alive, by the way. Sorja, Sorja had twisted... Yeah. Had a bad fall, um, snapped the leg, was still alive, by the way. Mm -hmm. But 
saw that it was probably more of a heroic act, I suppose, a self-sacrifice, and triggered the explosion via smartphone. Finishing off herself and Jerry, who was well underway on his way to the to the afterlife anyway. The the of the two NPCs, Father Deacon Robert Vicar Thomas. Uh, Don't have to out. worry about that name no more. Yes, bled out. Like and, and let me let me let me let me just say this. Um but Deacon called, Thomas has never survived yeah. in, they, a, uh, in a in a in a game of this that he has appeared in. So <laughs> yay, we kept tradition. This was probably the worst death. He yes. The other one was very quick and pain, pain, painless. All right. So we did end with Derek had used one of the drone, not Derek. Oh, David had used one of the drones that Sorja had wired a flare onto earlier in the game and had flown the drone into Newsom House through a hole that's in the roof. And was going to set the flare off inside the house to set it on fire, which, as far as David knows, the flare did go off, activated it, it shot, but then there was a tumbling of the drone because of the pushback. And the last thing David heard over the, over the uh, microphone was, was um, where is Stephanie? Yeah. Well, Stephanie and the body of... Father Deacon Vecker Thomas Robert is currently anchored a couple miles offshore in the Newsom's Pride, whereas David Remo took the university research vessel. So David is currently off the coast of Newsom Island, and that is where we left it. And I believe it was around six. I think that's right. I'm pretty sure I wrote it in the game journal. <clears throat> but. And yes, it was around six. OK, so but let's start actually with. Laura Thorne and two of so we can get their characters in, especially let's start with Thorne, who is playing. Tell us about tell us about your new character, Thorne. My new character's name is Rick Thompson. He's a druid from the Appalachian Mount- Mountains right outside of Pittsburgh. He actually grew up with Jerry. So and the reason why he's here is because Jerry gave him a call saying, Hey, something's weird's going on, and I would like you to come out here and kind of get your input. So I made my way out to the uh the island and lo and behold. Here I am. All right. So let's start with Jerry, because Jerry, not Jerry. Rick. Rick, yes. Because Rick has something special Rick would like to do. All right. Rick is a practitioner of the Druidic arts and has most recently came across his first actual real live spell now yes there is magic and weird but it's not like your fantasy game dungeon dragons magic magic and weird can be really really slow but it can be really powerful and it's always really really risky so so okay uh, i was just gonna say so uh i'm gonna be taking this time right now to kind of make sure everything's prepared for and it might even take the the entirety of the night to get this done correctly, but I'm going to summon myself my own familiar. Yes. All right, and so also magic has a, a flavor, um, and and weird, um, mechanically magic is, and I hate to use the word generic, but um, he has the spell called bind familiar. Now. 
he has a druidic druidic like nature kind of version of the spell so any of the materials and stuff that he would use would be more in the realm of nature and stuff like that to whereas if someone had found this spell while digging through like the order of the golden dawn's archives it would be mechanically game wise the same spell except for the components and things that would use the be used in it would be more like hermetic magic uh candles books and spells and stuff like that so <clears throat> rick's version is the the druid version so yours is the is the nature based base version and you have arrived here on oak haven you haven't been here that long um and you've decided you want to use this spell. I mean, it says well, like I can't have my 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 other dogs around, so I might as well see if I can summon one. All right. You would normally have to, you know. Basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a lunch, bunch of narrative, not lunch, a bunch of narrative on this. I'm gonna skip some of the mechanical things because. You didn't have them, and I went ahead and assumed that you would have them so we can go ahead and introduce you into the game. So magic also has requires occult resources. So and weird, this is like a, a generic value. And I hate to use the name generic, but it represents the things that you would use to cast a spell with. So for in your case, it would be uh maybe rare plants and herbs, uh dirt from a specific field in Ireland from somewhere or a particular kind of stone but you have this already and you know what from your understanding what this is going to do and I'm, I'm assuming you're going to try to bond an earth spirit correct all right this is going to, if done correctly it's going to bind it's going to summon a spirit you'll enter into a contract and then it will manifest as in the form of an animal of your choosing. So. All right. So you let's, let's go ahead and get it started. Now you have made your way out into the Southern part of St. Camping Island, which is, Harp Island. That is the most nature. There's a lot of wildlife preserve and stuff out there. Um, it's right around dusk. It's the it's the time when it's not quite day and not quite night. You're at an area where there's some water, but it's because it's not quite ocean and it's not quite land. You prepare everything you need. And one of the main components is to start a, a small fire. You start a small fire. And one of the things about the druidic magic and the nature magic is being sky clad. Now, I'm not going to say you have to be, but um, sky clad is just part of the tradition where they, they do rituals and stuff in the nude. So... That's something Rick would do. Yep. All right. So you've got everything out. You <laughs> literally and figuratively, you've got everything out. All right. Let them sway in the wind. <laughs> you do the chants. You do the prayers to the nature spirits. Occasionally, it requires you to throw in some kind of a plant leaf matter into the fire then some powdered stone into the fire and this this goes on for about an hour or so one thing you notice it starts to get a little cooler even though the fire you're right next to the fire the next thing you notice are butterflies it's a little early for butterflies and these butterflies are very strange they're blue they look like blue monarch butterflies 
they start f- flittering around you, occasionally landing on your shoulder, landing on some leaves and stuff or debris that's around you. <clears throat> then everything gets really, really quiet. Quiet, not really quiet, but really muffled, like things are far, far away. The, f- the light from the fire actually feels like it's pressure pushing on you. The air starts to take on all these earthen and evergreen kind of smells. <clears throat> and in the shadows, you can see what appears to be two pinpoints of light, and you feel that there is a presence. And you can hear from all around you. You have summoned me. Yes, I did, my friend. You wish to enter into a contract. That I do. One that would be beneficial for both you and I. We will be, we will be equals in this endeavor. Aren't we all equals in one way or another? So be it. Which form shall I come? A bloodhound. So be it. All your senses return to normal. And from those shadows, a bloodhound steps. I will call you Rusty. (laughs) And Rusty shall be my name. Rusty speaks to you like you have a telepathic bond. I don't know if you looked at it or not, but I put a note. Should be in your packet. It says uh, familiar abilities. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So that's everything that uh, the familiar will do for you. Now, in weird, a familiar is sort of like tag team controlled by the game master and the, the, the host and the player. Um that is an option. If you want total control of the familiar, I'll let you have it. Um, but in the past, I've I've made up like the personality and stuff of them, and kind of uh, treated them as a quasi NPC. Quasi NPC would work best. All right. So it's a partnership. <laughs> One of which I look forward to, my friend. All right. The first thing that Rusty does is smells the air and sniffs the ground. Where are we? This is a strange place. We're on an island that, that that's in the United States. My friend Jerry called us out here and... I, I feel as though he might be getting in a bit of trouble. There's an old smell to this ground. There is old, old magic here. It's in the soil and it's in the air. There's also a... There's also a hint of corruption. Hmm. I don't suppose you'll be able to figure out where that corruption's coming from if we get closer to it. I'm not sure. I fear it may be this entire place. An island, you say? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, islands. I should say. We're on the southernmost island right now. Perhaps if we looked, we could find it. 
But right now, you're looking for your friend. That's right. And let our journey begin. All right. So that is the introduction of Rusty and, or should I say, Rick and Rusty. Two Wolf, are you with us? Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. All right. So Wolf, Wolf, you are playing. Well, Will Hanson, tell us about Will. Uh, Will is a security guard over at the auto plant where Sorge's parents worked. Work. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, he's studying at the university, military and um, police science. <laughs> All right. Did, did Will and Sorge have a connection? They knew each other. He admired from afar. Yeah. Okay. But never dated or anything like that. But he's friends with the family, the parents. All right. So this is actually probably earlier that day. And we're doing some timey-wimey stuff just so we can have everybody arrive at the right place at the right time without forcing it. All right, you are contacted by Sorge's father. Let's say Sorge's father is an upper level administrator at it's called Suzuko Motors, it is on Bigsford, which Bigsford, Bigsford is, a, is another area of St. Cambion Island. It's the industrial area. He calls you into his office, or his secretary calls you in. Secretary contact you. Could you meet with Mr. Damn, I archived your character. I don't remember the last name. Yeah. Mr. Sorja. Yeah. I'll be there. You want me to come at the end of my shift or now? I believe it's urgent. Okay. I'll come right up. I'll just let the my boss know. All right. And so Mr. Sorgia is like a vice president of something. <clears throat> the secretary tells you, oh, please go right on in. You go Thank in. You. And no, he's there. He know. has lots of uh, files and newspapers and stuff on his desk. And he looks, he looks really worried. He's got his, he's got his coat off and his sleeves are rolled up. Looks like hasn't slept well. And this is <clears throat> Mr. Hansen, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm thank you. I'm just gonna get to the I'm just gonna cut right to it. You knew my daughter, right? Yes. Uh, I, I thought you did. <sighs> we she's missing. The police won't do anything because she hasn't been missing long enough. There's, there's some strange things going on. The sheriff's department contacted me. Uh, apparently, she was involved in stealing files from the sheriff's department. She wouldn't steal files? I mean, no, why? They, they say they have her on camera taking files, deal, taking files that pertain to animal attacks. I can't reach her on the phone. Her mother can't reach her. No one else knows where she's at. Someone at the university had said that she had signed out on a boat. But we, we still can't reach her. I can go to the um, down to the docks and find out if the boat was returned and maybe see if some, if she went out with anybody else recently. I know she said she was working with somebody on some type of, um, on their research and stuff using her little submarines or something. Yes, we are quite worried. And 
you can't get the police to move on this at all. You know, it's tourist season and everything, and it's just chaos. So, you know, I'll go check this out. We'll cover. I'll clear it with. I'll clear it with the company. I'll cover any expenses. We really just need to know what's going on. And you knew her. Yes. Okay. I'll go, go right away. All right. Here, take this. He gives you a card. This is this is the number two. This is direct number to my personal cell phone. If you need anything, give me a call. Will do. And I'll go down and take the company truck, which I always use. All right. Okay, you take off. For Rick, again, this doesn't take place at exactly the same time. It's a little earlier during that, earlier during the, 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 the during the game in game time, but you do you go to places where Jerry may go. Um, you find out that uh, he was running around with someone at the yacht club and you eventually run into this individual oh shit what was his name can't remember now it's given my reginald 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 is the dock boy i suppose if that's a if that's an occupation for the yacht club <laughs> reginald had told you that as far as he knows Jerry was helping out Miss Stephanie Newsom on something dealing with her, the sale of her island. And you don't have a boat. He said that he had saw them earlier. leaving from the south side of the island with a, with a man he describes and gives you the name, uh, David Remo, and a young lady named Sorja Sora. Well, I might as well then uh, head down that way to see if I can find his truck. All right. It must be destiny. It's got to be fate. You all arrive at the same time, except for you're all headed that way. Let's go to let's go to David. I, I don't I don't want to convolute this, but I don't want to rob this. I don't want to rob the scene either. So, David, how long are you going to stay out there? You've for the for the other players. It's probably around five o'clock and you're independently heading for the, the harbor, the dock, the south side docks. All right. Back to David. Yes. So the, <clears throat> as I, as I remember the scene, um, <clears throat> it was um, Dr. Stephanie Newsom and I, <clears throat> and I on the boat. Um, <coughs> we had the deceased body of <coughs> uh, Father Vicar, uh, Father Vicar Deacon Thomas, um, on board. He had apparently bled out, uh, oh, made yes. a made a hell of a bloody mess on the boat. That he did. But seeing as this is a university <coughs> research um, boat. This deck has seen uh, more than one bloody mess on it in the past. So this is really nothing new. In fact, there are hoses and things to take care of all of this, <clears throat> should it be necessary. Um, but uh, as I remember, um, Dr. Newsom, Stephanie, uh, her state of mind was um, rather frantic. And uh, um, we had 
fairly recently um, seen the <coughs> excuse me seen <coughs> seen the dock erupt into uh, into flames. Yes, you blowed the dock up real good. Um, <clears throat> and uh, um. I am going to replay the um, uh, little section that I captured from the drone footage of um, the back of the house. Um, there was uh, a kind of a fire pit area or circle area um, with some seating. And there was, a, as I remember it, a, 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 a hole or something uh, in the ground with some um, sparks or flames or some some kind of light source coming coming from them. I want to play back that section and um, ask Dr. Newsom, uh, Stephanie, if she she recognized that area and she can tell me a little bit more about what that area is. All right. So you're you're on the research boat then. Yeah, on so, okay. the research. Oh, sure. All right. Off, offshore, um, but still in the general vicinity. Um, we haven't haven't taken off yet. Um, All right. Still trying to process everything that's been going on. Okay. It's nighttime. There are no clouds. The moon is half. It's, it's, it's waning gibbous, but it's in its half position. So there's still quite a decent amount of light. Not to mention a couple of islands away there is lighthouse so you can hear the sounds of the ocean at night the, the air is getting cool she's still in a wetsuit which i understand those are actually kind of uh, insulated but um she probably has a one of the blankets or something wrapped around her too she is close to being in just a psychological shock she still has blood on her hands and blood smears on her face from Deacon Thomas, there is, there is a quiver to her hands. Her, she keeps re-wetting her mouth like it's constantly dry. And she's just lost, staring at the island. And you bring her the, you bring her the screen, and she takes a look. And you can see the, the light from the screen illuminates her face, casting these unsettling shadows and she watches it she knows how to use an iPad she presses it to pause it she says that's a, that's the garden um, we we had it stoned in and there's a little fountain. It was more for. It was just meant to be like a decorative garden, and well, there I don't. I don't know why that hole is in the ground, but that's where, that's where we buried Hannibal and Agamemnon. Uh, God, that was back in the seventies. Um, you got to understand, they weren't like this before. They, if that's even them. They were the, they were some of the most kindest and gentle animals. They they never bit, they never snapped. They were never like that. I don't know what that is, but here, as she points at where those other holes, where those mounds of earth were, that's where my mother and father were buried. Um, I I guess the. So you remember her mother and father were exhumed a couple days ago. Yep. <clears throat> I, I don't understand what... I mean, it, it looks like possibly someone has dug Hannibal and Agamemnon up. I don't know. I just keep thinking about it. Horrible. It was horrible, David. Agamemnon was covered in fire. It didn't seem to be bothering him. If that was even Agamemnon, that's got to be something like demons or something, right? That can't be real. None of this can be real. But it is. 
I don't know. What do we do, David? <clears throat> Dr. Newsom, we, we approach this scientifically. We take it one step at a time. Right now, we have um, Sorja and, um, and, uh, and Jerry uh, on the dock. Has the dock died down or is it still continuing to burn? Or does it yeah, even exist? There. Oh, the dock is jacked up. It's not disintegrated, but remember, it's like a T-shaped dock. Yep. Um, that area from the center on out, some of the pylons and stuff are still there, maybe even some of the decking boards. But, I mean, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like an aerial bomb, you know. It was, it yeah, was, yeah. It was some pipe bombs going off. So, it's jacked up bad. There's a little bit of fire. Because um, what I'd like to try to do is I'd like to try to recover um, the bodies, if I could, um, and weapons and things like that. Basically, clean up the clean up the scene a little bit. All right. Well, you put the boat in gear and start moving over towards the. Towards, towards the, the towards the dock. Um, dock, yeah. The boat has a large spotlight on it that you can use. So go ahead and make a visual perception check. And I'll make one for her. not Deacon Thomas. There's a number for you. That would be a two double ones. All right, that is what we call a critical failure. It says third degree critical failure. Okay, so what happens is your You're steering the boat and you're shining the big light. And all of a sudden there is a large boom and you hear some cracking. Stephanie actually stumbles over the edge and she falls into the water. Um she starts yelling for help. Oh, God, David, David, help. Um, I, the boat, uh, the motor is still going, but the boat is like some, the boat is snagged on something. So the boat isn't moving. It's like a run of ground. Yeah. Okay. And you, um, can, hear, you can hear grinding. So I shut the engines down. Um, <clears throat> no sense trying to make it worse. Um, and I, uh, uh, you know, swing the light around to where I heard the splash of Dr. Newsom to try to light up the, the water, see if I can, can, can spot her in the water. And then um, I'll throw her a line. Yeah, you see her. It's not a problem. She's splashing around down there. There's lots of debris down there. You see it, but she doesn't see you, doesn't see it. But behind her is the body of Sorja, face down, floating in the debris. She doesn't see it, though. Like, she's more freaking out, kind of. Yeah, understandably Get back so. on the boat. Yeah. It's not because she's scared of drowning or anything. This is a second home to her. It's because... <laughs> There's there's demon things running around. Yeah, because of the the, the evening we've had so far. Yeah. Let's just say we haven't had a quick trip to the opera. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the objective is to try to get um, Dr. Newsom back up on, on board as quickly as possible. All right, that's not a problem. You can hand her down. Like, the back of the boat actually has, like, a, some a ladder area where divers can go down, so you can help her get around to that area 
and she gets back up to her on the rear. I think we hit something, David. Maybe we've run aground. Uh, I, I should have. I'm sorry. If I would have been in my right mind, I would have told you there's lots of, lots of rocks and debris here in this area. No worries. We'll 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 figure this out again. One one step at a time. We're just taking this one step at a time. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna search around and see if if we have used all of the dive lights or not in the lighting system that we had set up to illuminate the dock area. Um, I'm not sure if that if we did or not, but <clears throat> uh, we'll say you have to. Okay, um, I'll grab one of the dive lights, and um, what I'll do is I'll I'll tell Doctor Newsom to to stay on deck, um, and I'm going to uh, check check the the bottom of the boat see if I can figure out if we've hit something what it is etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm just going to check stuff out. I'll be right back, kind of a thing. Um, All right. In as in as convincing a non frazzled. Holy crap, I'm freaking out. There is no freaking way I want to get in this water. I still got to do it, but I don't want to do this <laughs> kind of mentality. Doing my best, you know, uh, you know, best routine of this will be fine. This will be fine. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll strip down to my, my suit and I'll, uh, I'll uh, jump in the water and see if I can figure out what's going on underwater. All right. No problem. Uh, I this is this is regular swimming. You're a pro at this. I'm not going to make you make a roll or anything. And you actually have scuba gear if you need it. So <laughs> yes. <clears throat> All right. You go down. You can see debris everywhere. You can see the debris has settled to the bottom. Um, you you can actually see a lot of storm debris from the past storms too. Yep. There's tree logs, there's tree limbs, there's furniture, there's sunken boats. And as a matter of fact, one of these boats looks, it's it's a smaller one to two man craft generally used for fishing and saltwater fishing. Yep. Um, It doesn't look old at all. But it is sunk. It's it's damaged and it is sunk. It's a little closer to the shore. Um, you can even see there's a life jacket that's tied up in some of the roping, and it's still this bright, bright color, like it's brand new. Yeah. But as far as the task at hand, you can see yes, there is a large rock here, and the boat has hit this rock there is damage to the hull it's probably leaking on the inside in the sub hull area whatever you want to call it yep um the only way you're probably going to get loose is just gas it and play with the wheel unless you had some kind of heavy equipment that could take care of this one um. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> but you know, because you have boating, I won't make you make a roll because I went through trouble to do this. High tide is going to be at eight o'clock. That should help. Around around eight o'clock will be high tide, and the boat should, if it doesn't sink, lift up enough. That's two hours, though. So. Yep. Um, I'm gonna come back up out of the water, uh, get on deck. Um, when I get on deck, I'm gonna dry off. Uh, tell Doctor Newsom to um, to make sure the bilge pumps are are, are working. Um. <clears throat> And I give her directions to where on the console the the bilge, you know, the the manual override of the automatic bilge pumps is, and make sure that the manual override gets thrown and that they are in fact, you know, in the on and pumping position. Um, 
And uh, um, once I've dried off, I'm going to go below deck to assess any damage um, and see if there's anything that I can do, if the boat is, in fact, leaking, if there's anything I can do to, uh, to slow down the rate of, of water ingress. At this point, you can see um, some of the rug area and stuff. It's damp. There's a little sheen of water. Mm-hmm. Um, it is taking water, but it's extremely slow. Okay, so if if I feel that the that the bilge pumps um, should be able to handle that water, um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna let let that go, um, and uh, I'm gonna turn back to Doctor Newsom and say, uh, I think high tides in a couple of hours. Uh, that's gonna help lift us off. We've uh, we've you know hit a rock and. Um, we should be able to get off from that. Um, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, sit Dr. Newsom down <clears throat> and uh, make sure she has a jar of uh, Jerry's good stuff, um, and uh, <clears throat> just have her uh, sit tight for a moment or two, um, and say, "I'm. Gonna, I'm just gonna check out some of the this wreckage." Um, and see if I can't figure out what the hell is going on here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to, uh, and, and then proceed to do that with the objective of recovering Sorge's body that I had, uh, that I had seen, um, <clears throat> uh, in the water. Um, not afraid of, you know, swimming out after, her, um, and, uh, and, and, you know, grabbing a, grabbing a line, tying her off and, and bringing her back to the boat, that kind of thing. And at the same point in time, um, see if I can, um, check for, um, for, uh, for Jerry. All right. <laughs> Stephanie's doing a poor job of faking being okay. She's really trying to you get the feeling that she may even be embarrassed that she's not holding her shit together as much as she would like to. Um, but she's listening to what you're saying and she's, she's shaking her head and she has a, she's at that to her teeth occasionally, you know, that, that sort of cool, almost anxiety like chatter. But so, okay, David. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll hold everything down here. Wait a minute. Um, Dr. Newsom, um, do you know Father Price? Yes. Uh, would you, would you, you happen to have his... Remember, Number? she was speaking to Father Price, and yeah, it was yeah. a rhetorical question. I was okay. just okay. <laughs> kind of kind of leading her there. <laughs> you know, she, well, yeah, yes, David, I know Father Price. He's, why? Do Do you have his phone number, by any chance? Yes, yes. Oh <clears throat> my God, he's. Would you do me a favor? Would you give Father Price a call, and tell him everything? And I mean everything that has happened here tonight. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. Remembering, so remembering the words of um, Father Vicar Deacon uh, Thomas, uh, who said, Tell Father Price. Tell him what Father Price. What's going on here? Exactly. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> While she's doing that, you go to retrieve Sorja. Um, Sorja's not too terribly mangled. But Sorja is dead. Sorja has injuries. It's just she's been standing next to a pipe bomb, but you can get her body up, wrap it up in a tarp or something, a blanket. I'm sure there are specimen bags on board. 
And you go back out to look for Jerry. All right. Yes. While you're looking yes. for Jerry. Back on the mainland. Um, Will, you're at the gate of where the university has their sections of dock. Um, the gate is locked. There is a booth out there where a security guard would be. Um, it's still tourist season. There's still a shitload of activity going on. Rick, you pulled up and you saw Jerry's truck out there. And but the only other individual you see is William, which William is a is a tall, dark specimen of a man. Very chiseled and athletic. I imagine looks a lot like that who was that actor that just played Jack Reacher. I could be wrong. It's too well scared you too often. Yeah, that's <laughs> sounds good. It just uh William is got lots in, st in physical stats so Will he definitely spends mo majority of his time off of work in the gym yeah you could uh you can do your laundry on his abs so that's the only person that you see and probably Probably wearing a security jacket, actually. Maybe a security uniform still. Yeah, with the auto manufacturer thing on it and saying security underneath it. And I'm going to be looking around going, hmm, anywhere to get through here? <laughs> Type of luck. To try to investigate further to see if I can find something which might tell me where Sorger went. Since this is the last place she was supposed to go to. Kind of going, 6 o'clock at the evening. It's kind of early for him to close. Uh, I'm just gonna be. I'm, uh, I'm gonna get out of my car and start walking around, uh, checking out Jerry's truck, Rusty right by my side, and, and eventually right. make my way uh, over to the gate as well. I well, only you know how Jerry kept his truck. So full of beer cans. Um, there's beer cans and stuff like that. I'm sure, beef jerky packets. Yep. Definitely his truck. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that would be in Jerry's truck that would turn you on as a clue. Um, well, maybe he did, did have something written down like the address for for this place and maybe some notation if Jerry was the kind of person that takes notes like that. It, it would probably be on a, a beer-stained um, coaster or something like that. All right. Oh, I tell you what, how about this? There is a there's a receipt from Gutter's Bowling Alley that has a telephone number written on it. It says David. Interesting. Might as well give it a call. All right. Okay. It rings for a little bit. And then, uh, David, I'm sure you don't go swimming with your phone, so it's probably still on the boat somewhere. Indeed. All right. Um, a female voice answers. I don't know. Can someone else answer someone else's phone these days? Probably so, right? Sure. Let's just story storyfy it. <laughs> um, Hello? Hello. Uh, this I'm, female's voice. I'm trying to get a hold of David. Oh, David, David. Oh, David's here. He just can't come to the phone right now. Can't. Can I? Uh, hold on one moment. David! <laughs> you hear Stephanie calling for you. I, I 
you know, reach my hand out of the water and I and I and I wave back to her. <clears throat> what? I didn't mean to answer your phone, but it was ringing. Someone's you have a call. Who? May I, may I ask who's calling? My name's Rick. There's a gentleman named Rick. Is he trying to sell me the update to my car's warranty? And she just says, is there anything specific we can help you with, Rick? Uh, I'm, trying to, did... I'm trying to get a hold of my friend Jerry. Uh -oh, let's see if she can hold it together. She starts crying. <laughs> oh, are... God, poor Jerry. Are you okay? Oh, how do you know Jerry? You're his friend. How... Are you good friends? I grew up with him. Oh my god, I don't know how to say this. I don't even know if I should be talking about it. Oh. David is the, says he's a good friend of Jerry. And she's crying. Should I tell him? I'll, I'll be right there. Hang on. David's coming in out of the water now. Uh... You'd like to hold on, or I, mean, I can give me the call you back. Oh, poor Jerry! I have all the time in the world to hold on. All right, splish splash. David's out of the water. Gets the phone. There you go. Hello, hello, David. Yes, this, yes, this is David Remo. Who is this? Who am I speaking with? Hi, uh, my name's uh, Rick Thompson. Uh, I was a childhood friend of Jerry's. He actually gave me a call uh, a couple of days ago and asked me to come up. Oh, poor Jerry. <clears throat> um, asked you to come up from where? Pennsylvania. <gasps> oh, I'm oh, back Jerry. home. Mm -hmm. Poor Jerry in Georgia. <laughs> I see. Um, where are you now? Um, believe it or not, I'm at Jerry's truck that looks like to be outside the gate of a dock to a local college. The South Docks. I don't know the name. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Yes. I know. I know where you are. Um, gosh, I don't, I don't know how to, how to say this. There's, there's been an accident and, um, he's returned to the earth, didn't he? Oh, Jerry. Indeed. Indeed. He is. He's he's um, he's no longer with us. Well, well I hope he went out the way that he was hoping to in a blaze of glory. I <laughs> could not have described the situation any more accurately. Wait a minute. What? He actually went out in a blaze of glory. You're shitting me, right? I I don't um, I don't uh. I don't, um, I don't, oh gosh, what is that, what is that word, um, <laughs> what is that word, uh, I, 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 I tell it like it is, I tell it like it is. He was murdered, David, just say it like it is true, he was murdered. Well, um. Thank you for letting me know. Um, that house killed him. Did she just say the house killed him? Um, the circumstances are rather unusual. Let's see. <laughs> wow. The magic eight ball has landed point side up. They're very unusual. My source is saying no. <laughs> well, um, I we should we should get together, and um, I can tell you all about it. I, I look forward to that. I, I'll wait here until I, I guess you're out in the water still. Yes, uh, and I don't know how long we'll be. Um, 
and, and I've got my hands full. I've got a boat that that needs some some repairs. I've got to get it back to the dock. Um, I, I do suggest you be quick because it looks like there's uh, an, an officer or security guard that's looking around uh, the gate here, trying to see if they can get in. How is that possible? No one. Okay, um, <clears throat> can you find your way to, um, the bowling alley in town? Uh, you sure you don't want me just to wait here? Let's, let's try to meet at the bowling alley. It, it might take me a little while to get back. It's a probably a couple of hours just by just to travel by boat to get there um and then i'm gonna have some paperwork to fill out and and things like that so i don't want you to be left in a parking lot for that long okay um it looks like there's an address to a bowling alley in jerry's truck uh i'm guessing that's the one since it's surrounded by notes saying really good beer cheap food Nachos. That would be the one. Wife's ass. <laughs> I will meet you there, David. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Yeah, Stephanie rolls. She failed to restrain herself. <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> and then I, uh, I, uh, I, I take them like you know five minutes. To uh, to try to console um, Stephanie and just you know try to calm her down, you know focus on on your breathing, um, in through the nose, out through the mouth, David. The mouth. Thank you, thank you. Out through the mouth. I'm gonna pull it together, David. I promise. I'm I'm not going to have let this happen to poor Jerry and Sorger for nothing. I, I, I know you will. And she looks at the house and she says, "I'll kill you. I'll see you burnt to the ground and destroyed. I'll see you raised in this whole entire island paved over." Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to try to track down, um, I, you know, I'm going to console her a little bit and say, you know, we'll take care of this. We'll get through this, Dr. Dr. Newsom. We'll get through this one thing at a time, one thing at a time. I need to find Jerry, get him on board. Um, and see what we can do. All right. So, searching, uh, it's probably an hour is going by. You go back in to search some more. Um, you hear Stephanie. David! David, get back to the boat! David! Hurry, Hannibal's coming! And I head back to the boat all right before you can get to the boat um you can hear hannibal hannibal is just on the rocks trying to get down to the shore huge ugly um the, remember agamemnon was the one that burst in the fire um but hannibal's fur is smoldering however he does not go into the water I, I'm in the water as quick as my feet will take me if I'm not already there. Yeah, yeah. I figured you was in the water looking for the body. So, so. Excellent, yep. And I head back to the boat. All right. And Hannibal just starts barking. Woof! 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 
a few minutes later, you can smell, it smells like someone burning a bucket of feces. And it's like, there's just terrible sulfuric smell that you were, remember that Agamemnon smelled like when he burst into flames. And not too much longer, there's this flaming mass that's stumbling up towards the remains of the dock. And you, when it barks, it echoes like it's in some cavernous void. And they walk along the shore and what's left of the dock just howling. You could do whatever you want. I'm just letting you know what they're doing. You know that classic cartoon scene where the character is running and their feet are going a million miles a second and you hear that that crazy sound that happens in the background? Yeah. That's that's the sound and that exactly that's the sound and action that David is currently making as he puts on his best breaststroke form to get back to the boat as fast as he possibly can. He is wigged the F right out. He is back to that boat and he is remembering the line from one of his favorite movies, Apocalypse Now. Never get off the boat. Never get off the boat unless you're willing to take it all the way. And uh-huh. David is not willing to take it all the way. <laughs> all right. As you get, as you start climbing the ladder on the back of the boat, you hear the motor start. And then you can hear the sound of the stone grinding against the hull. And Stephanie's, move, move, move. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. She manages to get this thing off of the stone. You hear some scraping and more metal cracks. But this thing slides off of that stone. Just that, like, if you wouldn't have got on, you probably would have got left. Um, but something tells you that she waited until you at least had a hand on the ladder. <laughs> it's all I needed. <laughs> it's, it's all I needed. Uh, <coughs> since Dr. Newsom knows these waters better than any, <coughs> anybody. I'm going to tell her, um, let's head back to, uh, to Newsom's pride as quickly as we can. All right. She's okay, David. Promise me, David. Promise me we're going to, we're going to put a stop to this, David. Promise me. Dr. Newsom, we will. But we are only... Two two people? Two. Thank you. We're only two. As you saw, the... Huge... Dogs, huge David. dogs. Yes, the dogs are huge. <sighs> um, <clears throat> we're not. We don't have the the th- things the that we need for this. We need help. Whatever we need, David. Whatever we need. We'll did you it. speak? Did you speak with uh, Father Price? I left a message. 
Um, <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll take over the 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 helm. And um, and uh, <clears throat> say, give him another call now. Um, and in, in fact, uh, you can also send him a text message uh, and throw a nine one one at the end of it to uh, to try to let him know that this is important. Right, David. I I don't have his I don't have his cell. I was calling the church. I'll I'll try. I left a message for him with Sister Bridget, but I'll I'll tell her it's urgent this time. Indeed. All right, so let's not leave uh, Will out of this action. We rewind probably. I'm assuming that Rick has no reason to approach the security person. Oh, no, I'm still going to go up to him after I get off the phone. Okay. All right. So this is actually probably 45 minutes earlier than the now present yes yeah well as i was looking at the gate and stuff i was gonna look around i could i remember sorja used a scooter a lot of the times or whenever dad's cars and stuff and i look around to see if i see her scooter or anything else in the lot okay yeah you've grabbed out so i walk over to the scooter and start looking looking it over I mean, Abby is right. nice and cold, so it's been there for quite a while. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, tell us how Sorja would keep her scooter. Orderly. Well, All right. yeah, <laughs> nice and, I mean, what space there is, it'd be yeah. nice. Everything would have its little cubby hole or whatever, even if they made an insert under the seat for storage and stuff, everything would be right where it's supposed to be might look around to see if there's any papers or notes and stuff okay um would Sorja have left any notes to indicate where she was going she, she probably would have kept track of no, of things which was going on like because of the her drones and stuff like okay mm -hmm. i have this drone this drone on the ship type thing to keep track of everything all right well you're looking around the scooter. Rick, I'll let you if you want to approach the security guy. Uh, when you I, do see him, though, he doesn't have, like, a harbor security or anything like that. You can see that once you get close enough. This The jacket says Suzuka Motors. Uh, excuse me. Um, what, yes. brings, what brings you here tonight? Uh, a, a friend of mine is missing... And well, this is her scooter, and she was supposed to be going. Last I heard, going out with somebody on one of the research vessel vessels, and stuff. But nobody's heard from them. That's interesting because I was looking for a missing friend as well. I, I just spoke to a uh, 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 David Remo. Wait, that might be the grad student she was working with. She does a little, like submersible submarines and stuff. I have no clue what he, he does, but uh -huh. my friend Jerry w was a, a hunter by trade, so. And Is a that... rabid drunk. He can shoot a gun uh. and kill his lunch. Did he go to the bowling alley? Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, He's, David asked me. He said me, she hung out with some people at the bowling alley. Matter of fact, David asked me to meet him at the bowling alley. I'm trying to figure out why they're closed so early. I mean, it's usually as they're not are, shut down. As you are speaking, like uh, a Grubhub kind of vehicle pulls up. And are, you, are either of you Josh? No. no. Damn it. Okay. Then you hear some keys in the distance, and then there's a security yeah. guard running up to the gate. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Hey, is that my burger? Hey! Hmm. Are you Josh? Yeah! Here, I'll take it up there to him for you, so you can get on to your next order. Rest he's you hungry? Of, he's got a piece of toilet paper underneath his feet, you know, ch -ch -ch, right as he's running to the gate. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Oh, I've been waiting for that. It says Daddy O is on it. On the bag. Mm -hmm. I'll he grab it. He unlocks the gate and steps out. Hey, how's it going? Okay. Do you know Sorja took a ship out today? She's one of the um, engineering students. She was, was working with somebody in... Sorja. David, Marine. yeah. You talk, yeah, they got, they got a boat out earlier today. Were they out with anybody else? Uh, a burly, well, rednecked looking dude, ugly as sin. Well, the guy drives that truck. Yep, that's him. Okay. Yep, that's know. him. You haven't heard from them? No, they've been out a while. I just, uh, oh. you know, duty was called, you know. I had to take care of some. And then he, like, scraps the toilet paper off his foot. <laughs> you know, a pine cone I was just taking, better, right? I was taking care of something. I was taking care of something. In the back. You, you do know a pine cone works better, right? <laughs> Yeah, look, we'll tell you what. I'll go check the books, and I can tell you exactly what time they took out of here. Uh, that he sounds his, great. He grabs his bag. Boy, if you like the smell of double chili, I mean, of double bacon cheeseburgers. Like Daddy-O's double bacon cheeseburger mm -hmm. would make a vegan, would melt a vegan's willpower. <laughs> so he sets his burger bag down and starts flipping through the through the book. It's only one page, so it's not a lot of flipping range. Here you go. Dave Remo signed it out. Uh, Sorja signed with him. I don't know about your friend Jerry, but yeah, they took off with that boat. It was and like what's, seven, seven in the morning. Yeah. Looking at it going, what is this area here where they said they're going? Oh, that's just the area around the lighthouse. Around Los the lighthouse? Islands. I guess they're doing some kind of I don't know. <laughs> research. Oh, well, a research vessel. That would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're looking at like... Okay, maybe it just took them longer than it was supposed to. Yeah. Hmm. Jerry, really need to get a hold of this date. Jerry doing research? I highly doubt it. He's three sheets to the wind 90% of the day. He gets a big bite of his burger. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I smelled it all over him. Oh, God. I mean, he was stinking like a, like a steel he was. Did he have any bags or anything with him? And stuff? Oh, yeah. Dale had I, bags. I've heard about Jerry. Did he have any big cases with him? Oh. Yeah, some big case. cases. Cases or something. Well, You're about to lose that burger, buddy. <laughs> You see my dog, uh, right? <laughs> the dog is mm. drooling everywhere, as usual. I uh, forgot you had. To, I forgot you. Had, I got. I got to keep remembering. You got the uh, familiar now. The familiar is just staring at him like he will lose that food soon. I'm not gonna look stop at him you. eat. I'm not gonna stop you. A slob. It's yeah. falling all over his clothing. Completely. You can so always look at the burger down and wipes his mouth out. It's not just out of his mouth. Damn it. Damn it. And then he yells as the driver is going, You forgot my diet, Dr. Pepper. Really? A double bacon cheeseburger and you got a diet? That's oh, you know, I, I just like the way it tastes. You know, Dr. Doc, Pebble, you, you see those little sweetness commercials. Man. It's all yours, Rick. <laughs> all right. You gonna, you gonna get the dog to eat his burger? That's yep. Yeah. So you're supposed to meet David at the bowling alley. Okay. Don't they have to return the ship first? The boat? Whatever that thing is first. Yeah, I, I asked him if he wanted me to wait here, but no, apparently not. Oh, hey, buddy, you want to buy? Oh, oh, hey, only you can hear. Only you can hear the dog, Rusty. Rusty, like, you will feed me some of that. I will have some. Oh, you want to bite, buddy? Here. <laughs> 
I told you we were going to lose it. You know, I can call out to the boat to see if there's any problems. Yeah, would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Sorge's father is really worried about her. I don't know if we're allowed to have animals in here or not. All right. No, don't worry. He's a service dog. <sighs> Better have his cholesterol checked, man. All right. Ah, he's good. He goes to the radio. Switch, walk, squawk. Uh, well, this is gonna be odd. There's a rewind in time a bit, but okay, time is catching up. There's, there's, there's been Ubers and everything, right? Okay, we had to wait for a while for the guy to show up. Yeah, Dave, if you're driving the boat, the radio squawks off. Is, um, South Shore, South Shore docks to Boat Remo. Uh, research vessel 413372. Yes, uh, David Remo here. Uh, Mr. Remo, uh, we, we had a, we're calling to check and see if everything's all right. Is everything good? Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing, nothing to see here. Everything's fine. All right. Uh, well, you have someone inquiring about you. Do you have someone named Jerry aboard? Oh, Jerry! <laughs> <clears throat> yes, but he is currently uh, manning the pumps. Um, uh, who's, who's, who's inquiring? Maybe I can, uh, uh, give them a call. All right, Rick, you can hear it. This is the same person you talked on the phone with earlier. He, and the security guard looks over at you. And you are? Oh, uh, well, Will Hansen. Well, we, we have a Will Hansen. Rick Thompson. Rick Thompson. You recognize the Rick. You talked to Rick earlier. Does does Rick know Jerry? Yeah, Rick knows Jerry. Yeah, I think I spoke to him earlier. Um, Just have them both meet me at uh, at the bowling alley. Sure. Uh, Y'all can hear what's happening over radio, and he's like, sure. Uh, Ask him if Sorge is okay, because her father wor is worried about her. Uh, what's the situation on Sorge? Is Sorge okay? Uh, father's worried about her over 10, 6, 9. <laughs> Everything's fine here. Everything's fine. What? <clears throat> We've we've still got some uh, some some uh, some work to do. Uh, we've got the boat until seven in the morning, I think. At least that's when I had it signed out till. Is there any sure. problem with that? No, is uh, we have some concerned people uh, looking for you. Okay. Hey, hey, dog. Those are my fries. Hi. Remo out. Yep. Click. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it, Josh says. Is there uh, anything else I can do for you? I don't think so. I guess we'll just make our way to the bowling alley. No. Nope. Rusty, okay. come here. Uh, don't worry. I'll, I'll get you some more to eat soon. Once we get to the bowling alley, uh, I'll see what they have on the menu that you can have. Fine, you can get some ch cheddar cheese and uh, fries. All right. As we walk away, I look at Rick and go, did the person on the radio sound like he was avoiding answering questions? Oh, clearly. Something? Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it, um, 
from what he told me on the phone call that uh Jerry returned to the earth. <gasps> oh boy. Okay. Returned to the earth. Okay. Why? If they're just doing research. And was there a woman in the background on the boat too? And that was definitely wasn't Sorja. No, um, that was uh, I, I, uh, her name was uh, Stephanie. 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 Oh. She was kind of fra very fr uh, frantic about saying what happened to Jerry. So I, I, I'm not sure what transpired there. I mean. He, Jerry was ugly as sin, but he was still a smooth operator. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, we can either wait for him to come here, because if they're coming back, they have to drop the ship boat off. They're not supposed to dock it anywhere else. Or we just meet him at the bowling alley like he wants. Well, Rusty's very hungry, and he's chopping at this bit for these chili cheese fries. So why don't we get our butts moving as I slap Will How does the a ass. dog know about chili cheese fries? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you heard it straight from his mouth. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. Well, you know where you're going since so you're... From the sounds of it, you weren't from around here. Uh, no. Uh, I found the address in Jerry's truck. Oh, okay. I can sh um, lead lead you over there if you want. I'm not supposed to have anybody in the company truck. Otherwise, I'd let you take a ride in the truck. No, I, I got my Prius, so I'll be all right. Okay, so I guess we head to the bowling alley. Or at least I do. Then I turn away for this one. Oh, shit, it's hot in here. All right. Um, okay. We have one situation to take care of on the boat. You get to the Newsom's Pride to let Stephanie off. And she's, as soon as she gets on, she's reminded of poor father, the body of. But hold on. I get ahead of myself. She, she makes the call. She, you can hear her, she talks to us, Sister Bridget. And she hangs the phone. She's, she's going to get him to call me right back as soon as possible. A, just a few minutes later, the phone rings and you, the conversation goes somewhere like, uh, Oh, Father Price, I have some horrible news. It's about... It's about poor Deacon Thomas. It's terrible. He's passed on, Father. He's... Well, you remember the dogs I was telling you about. And that. Well, I don't know what to do, Father. What do we do about poor Deacon Thomas? What? I mean, I guess we got to call the... Are you sure? Or should, but shouldn't we call the police, Father? But he's dead. So we at least call the ambulance? The, the hospital? Somebody? But I don't understand. How will you take care of it? Yes. Yes, I trust you. Yes, I trust you, but... I don't know how I feel about this, but it just doesn't seem right. Okay, well, I'll call you as soon as I'll call you. I'll call you as I, I call you when I get to the yacht club. But you're asking me to lie. I, 
Father, I don't know when, I don't, I couldn't tell you when the last time I told a lie. I, okay, okay. All right. Okay, I'll call you when I get there. She is visibly distraught when she hangs the phone up. That's exactly what you heard. And she, she just wants me to leave the body. He'll, he'll see that it's taken care of. And not to say anything to the police or anyone. That just doesn't sound like Father Price, David. <clears throat> Where are you supposed to leave the body? Your own nuisance pride, and he said, he said. He said, we'll, we'll be waiting at the yacht club and you call him as soon as I get in. Father Price has been a friend of the family for a long time, for a long time. It's just strange that he would ask us Strange that he would ask me to lie, especially about something this serious. Well, I don't know what to say other than in these matters, I think we should trust Father Price. I think you're right, but it doesn't make me feel any better. There are not a lot of good feelings from tonight. All right, so you get to Newsom's Pride, you take care of that, and you, unless there's anything else. You part ways. You head for south, and she heads for the. The the, the only other question I've got in my mind is, um, I'm a, a PhD candidate who has yeah. signed out a research vessel from the university, you from a foreign corpses. country, with a couple of corpses sitting on boat. Yeah. Kind of need to figure out how to take care of those. But as I said. One step at a time. Oh, step. You, didn't, you didn't find Jerry, so there's. Just oh, I didn't find Jerry. Okay, so I only have Sorgent. Okay, um, <clears throat> one step at a time. Um, I guess I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, I would have, I would have uh, packaged Sorja up in one of the larger marine specimen bags that would be available on the boat. Sure. Um, and, you know, stored her body in the specimen storage area, wherever that was. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and then um, since I have the boat for a period of time, um, I'll, I'll cut uh, Dr. Newsom loose. I'll tell her, uh, head back to the Yacht Club, um, deal with... Uh, um, Father Price, um, and then I'll meet you, uh, and then meet me back at the uh, at the bowling alley, um, and we'll go from there. All right. So you'll contact her, or she'll contact you, or whichever um, happens first. I, I make sure she's got my phone number. I've got my phone number, and I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the research vessel to one of the public wharves, tie off, and head to the uh, bowling alley. Uh, there's some people asking about Jerry and Sorja. Um, I'll speak to them. And then um, you speak to, to, to Father Price, and we'll reconvene back at the bowling alley. 
And if you need me, you have my number. You can call me at any time. Right. Thank you, David. And remember, we're going to put a stop to this. We'll figure this out. All right. And she pulls herself together enough to get the boat underway. All right, this is probably a good time to take our break before the scene changes. So. Sounds Lord good. Lord Thorin, take us to break. Everybody, we will we'll be right back. Don't forget to go refill your water, get some more snacks, and we'll be back in just a few moments.
now. Hey, and we're back, and we'll jump right back into it. Does everyone have your snacks and bladder refiller resources? All right. And right off the bat, diamond. Wow. We got a mess load of points to get rid of. <laughs> Need mm. higher point items. 3,400. Not for much longer. Now, come on. I got, you know. Sorry, 34,000. I don't have a young man's bladder anymore, so don't hit us with too much of that uh, <laughs> hydrate time. All right. Oh, <clears throat> David. All right, so I, the host, cannot hear the bowling and I music, but the players seem to be able to hear the bowling and I music. So hopefully you hear it at home, and if you do, let us know if it's too loud. It went away. It went away. <laughs> Always one. That's Always. what happens when you play with it too much. Always one. Well, imagine there's the sound of an arcade and some bowling balls roaring across a freshly waxed floor and some some googly blooms of pins going around. That's the sound they make, right? Google boom. Hey. All right. It restart it restarted. Okay. I still can't hear it. <clears throat> boom boom. Here we go. Well, obviously David oh, David. Rick and Will are going to make it to the bowling alley first. So, um, the only thing that I see a problem with is when you go in. All right, let's just do it. You go there together, right? Okay. It was a pain in the ass to get here. Again, let me refresh your minds. This tourist season is a Makes driving <laughs> going through the gauntlet. There's God damn it, loud music. Suck. There's the smells of all the restaurants just cranking out tons and tons of food. It's just wild. But the bowling alley gutters is located on the outskirts of town and is not attractive enough for the tourists to hit. So it's not it doesn't normally on the off season attract a lot of business. It's a little bit busier than tourist season because it's the locals going, Hey, we need some place to go. Oh, you remember that shitty bowling alley in the woods? Let's hit that place up. All right. Okay. There's still plenty of places to park when you pull up in gutters. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, is where great. Jerry said that they had Cheap beer and good chili cheese fries. Yep. When well, we go in, so when we go in to check in and stuff, I'm just gonna tell them we want Jerry's and David's normal table. We're supposed to be meeting them. All right. Since I'm the semi-local person. All right, you step in. There's this old worn-out rug with a with a flaming bowling ball embroidered on it. It's had years of gum and other sticky things stuck into the fibers. You can hear the bowling alley sounds. You can see there's people bowling. You get up to the counter, and there's a young African-American female. She's spraying out some shoes and stuff, and she smiles at you and greets you. Mm -hmm. Hey, hello, out of town. Oh, I don't hey. recall seeing you before. Hey, oh. wait, wait, wait. Is that your dog? Yes. Is there a problem? You can bring a dog in here. He's a service dog. Uh-huh. All right, look, I'm not going to have this argument. Just don't bring him into the into the cafe. That's fine. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're supposed to be meeting Jerry and 
David and Sorja here and stuff. They just said meet them at their normal table. Jerry David's friend. Oh, Glenn's friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Glenn, okay. Yeah, well, look, right down there, line, lane 14. Jeez. Oh, okay. Glenn! Glenn looks up. Friends of David and Jerry. Now, right. Rusty, just so you know, you do not want to be licking the floor in here. Wait for the chili <laughs> cheese fries. <laughs> yeah, it, it just... I, 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 you know, like I like to walk barefoot and all, but uh, not in this place. Yeah. Well, she, she, she slides you each a pair of shoes, bowling shoes. But have been in these. You sure Those we ain't gonna get clean. no fungus? No, fungus I use the good us? stuff. Okay. I'll have to have mine sent over from Boston to me then if I'm going to be here all the time. <sighs> you only right, got 10 pin or you got um, candlestick? It's whatever you want. Because <clears throat> I don't know what the hell that means. Right. Up here, there is three types of bowling. Duck pins, which look like little miniature oh, pins. Oh, little thin pins. And then tall, skinny, tall, yeah. skinny sticks. I just and they saw use those. a small handheld ball instead of the big giant regular yes. bowling ball. I just saw that the other day on something. I don't remember what I was watching. Yep. And, and was, you get three of the little balls compared to just two of the big balls. And I was like, oh, look, someone's bowling. I should watch because I have a bowling alley in the game that I'm writing. And I was like, what the hell kind of bowling is this? It's like the ball is the size of a grapefruit. Yep. <laughs> but three or four pounds are yeah. usually marble. Yeah, you could hurt somebody with that thing. It looks like. Yeah. All right. You're not shot putting with them. Well, my character might. <clears throat> okay, as you make your way down to the lane access aisle, that's where you must have bowling shoes. On. All right, and down there where your tokens are, you're not really there. It's just that's where you're going. You'll be there when you get there. Just no matter where you go, there you are. All right. Look at Rick and go, beer? Beer. And I know, Ch chili cheese fries for him. Do you want the chili on it? I would hate to know what he's going to be like tonight with chili. He says yes, so chili. Yes, and this, oh, will okay. be, this will be the first time it's ever had chili. So. I walk over Someone to better lay some newspaper and... down. I walk over to the bar and get some and place an order. Don't blame me if your asshole's on fire later. All right. Well, you see where the bar is at. You walk up there to the bar and Jerry, you're going to have not Jerry. Damn it. You may, you may, your name may have to be Jerry for a little while. I'm sorry. Rick, you're going to go head down. Yeah. I'm going to go straight down there's to the a, table. Yeah. There's a young Asian male who's waving his, Hand at you. I got a token for him. Let's see if I should put it down there. I may need his character sheet. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Rusty starts sniffing at the air. magic here. Can you tell where? Somewhere close. Not magic. Death. Death? Well, I smell the dead. Stay on alert and let me know if, if it gets closer. I will. Thank you, Rusty. All right. Uh, I'm drawing a blanket names again. Don't worry. Here we go. Uh, Will, Will, you go up to the bar, order, make your order. And um, there's a guy there and he says, uh, all right, give me a name and I'll call it out when it's ready. Will. Gotcha. <clears throat> 
All right, so you, you settle in. Glenn's there. He's got a pitcher of beer. And he's got several empty paper boats of some kind of with greasy remnants inside them. You know, David? Uh, yeah, uh, um, myself and my friend over there are waiting for him to show up. Cool, cool. Uh, how do you know David? Through my friend Sorja. And they hang out at school, I believe. Ah, okay, okay. I haven't talked to him. In, I haven't talked to him since I think years. No, yeah, I saw David last night. As a matter of fact. All right. Uh, I'm actually friends with uh, a, a gentleman named Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. I know Jerry. He's cool. Oh, all right. So we kind of know the same people. That's that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um. Well, I haven't heard that you. I could call David. Oh no, no. He, he's probably on his way right now. So. No need. Oh, to. okay. Cool, cool. So, y'all you know, just talk a little bit. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to burn all the time doing this. Unless is there anything mm-hmm. specific you want to talk about with him? If not, we'll roll David in. No. Nope. Kind of look at all. Once I get down there and stuff, I'll just look at Glenn and go. You know what they were doing all together? Type of mode. Just trying to gather information. Uh, oh, do I know? Look at this arm. Watch this. This is some gnarly shit. And he starts to unroll it. And you can see this just gashed up. That's a dog bite. You ever see anything like that? Rusty, go over and sniff that, please. I look at I look at Rick and go. Dog, that dog, that yep. bite, that's a lot bigger than most dogs. Rusty sniffs on it and doesn't say anything. Oh, this dog was huge, and he holds his hands out like this. It was huge. Like I gotta tell you, I went out there a couple nights ago, so me and my friends, because we we're all part of the astronomy club, you see. Went and, out uh, where? Well, to this island out there. In the James Islands, it's a, there's this old one that's really abandoned. It's got an old building on it. Uh, a storm took it out a long time ago. And uh, well, you're really not supposed to go out there, but sometimes people go. A lot of times people go out there actually. But uh, I just got a brand new telescope. Man, you should see it. It's got the nine inch mirror and the, the, the do's and the does and the dilly bobbers. And you turn this. Thing Let's get back to the story. Shit. Back okay. to the story. All right. And uh, this huge dog, I mean, this dog, when I say huge, I mean huge, look, huge. I'm talking head like this, huge. It just came at us. Like I a thought Rottweiler? I was dead. Oh, I, well, you know what? That's one of those with the face like this and the brown spots. You know, on the, ma- on the garbage trucks, the Mack trucks brand, the um, garbage truck. Yeah, you know, when they mean looking some uh, bitches, that's- right? That's an English bulldog on the Mack trucks. Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, it's black with the brown spots and stuff, but it was huge, dude. I mean, they don't normally get that big. I mean, I'm a dog trainer by trade, and Rottweilers, even the males, only get about 20 Did you see the size of that bite? Inches tall. No, no, what would buy him that size? The size of an arm. There's no dog alive that's actually has a bite mark that big i mean the yeah. biggest dog in the world which is the uh irish timber wolf is not even that big well look, i gotta tell you not even the dude at the er believed it was a dog i mean he gave it a shit and finally he was just like you know what i don't want to deal with you assholes blah 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 get the hell out you know but, but yeah oh but that's what david and them jerry they went because you see we left my telescope out there you know, I didn't want them to go, but they went anyway. They just was going to go and get my telescope, right? So, as a matter of fact, they have it. I'm supposed to did get, you, supposed to get did it you report to it to the police by any chance? Because Sorge's dad said something about her taking a bunch of police records about um, animal incidents or something. No, no, I didn't go to the police, but 
Would she have gone? Guy, the ER was giving me some shit about. Yeah, he's oh. supposed to go this the dog, blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, what whatever, man. It was crazy there. There's like all these out towners there and everything. And I, about this time, David, you could start rolling it. Just, just macking all in, like swagger. All right. You get to the counter and Monique is, hey, David, got some company down there. Oh, so, excellent. They're here. Yep. Um, right. Can I get a, another round for the table? So another round of fries for everybody and, you, you know, the usual. Yep. I'll, I'll get Thank him you. to bring. I'll get him to bring it out to you. It's not like he's doing anything except mixing up cheap old margaritas for people. And I, uh, I grab the, the the pair of shoes that she's obviously got laid out for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> grab them and head on down towards the table. All right, and y'all see David, and sure enough, Glenn goes, "Hey, David, <laughs> Glenn." Glenn, how you doing? We're over here, rock him down. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm talking to talking like he's some kind of surf dude. He's not, but <laughs> but he is very friendly. At least he is until he, at least he is until he's a member of really member of Billy and Lindsay's group, and then, <laughs> then he gets abused. All right. <laughs> So I'll, I'll head down to the table and, uh, you know, say hello to Glenn and uh, turn to um, turn to uh, Will and go. Uh, my name is David. David Hi, Remo. David. Nice. Reach yep. your hand out. Will Hansen. Um, I work um, with uh, Sorge's father. As you Secu do. Security over at the um, auto plant and stuff, and he had me searching around because he hadn't seen Sorja for a while. I was kind of worried about her. As you were talking, Rusty, no one else can hear Rusty, but Rusty sits up and takes attention in David's direction, and you hear him say, "There's something about this." Is it good or is it bad? This one smells of old magics too. Like tainted by old magic or can use old magic? Old magic's that is probably new to. Hmm. So he's kind of like us in a way. Yes. Thank you, Rusty. All right. Sorry, they didn't interrupt. Mm -hmm. It had to be done. Yeah. I see. So, and I, I reach over to... Um, Sorge, uh, Sorge is not with you? Well, let me get through introductions first. And you are? Hi, I'm Rick Thompson. I'm a childhood friend of Jerry's. Childhood friend of... Of Jerry's? Jerry's? Believe it or not. Friends? Jerry was a child. <laughs> and this is my partner, Rusty. Partner Rust Rusty. <clears throat> and I And when when you look at Rusty, you get the twitchy fingers. <sighs> Spirit fingers come in. Hey, yeah, this is the third dog you've seen that's giving you twitchy fingers. <laughs> and to, before you even ask, yes, he is. But uh, we have a contract. What are you guys talking about? Oh, don't worry about it, Will. It, everything will come clear soon enough. And I just, I just look, look down at Rusty, and are, are we cool? He's friendly. Don't you don't have to worry about him. 
Yeah, uh, unless you have chili cheese fries, because he's been a chili cheese fry kick apparently all night. So. I don't understand what this has to do with my temperature. Rick, don't take this. Don't take this. Don't take this wrong. Don't take this wrong. Um, this is not the first time someone has assured me that the dog I met was <laughs> okay. Uh, Friendly. Uh, uh, let's uh, just put it like this. Rusty. Behind me, please. And I tell it to him in his head. Cool means friendly. He fears me, Rick. He uh, should not fear me. Apparently he had a very bad incident recently. Which I would be interested in finding out what that was. I look at David and look at Glenn here. and go... See with his anxieties. You have pro you have problems with Thank dogs. You. Is it Glenn's dog problem? He was telling us about just before you arrived. Oh yes, yeah, he was. David, I was. Yeah, I was telling him about it, David. Oh God, he pipes back up again. We're talking to David, you moron. I was talking to David too. I was telling him all about it, Dave. Your story. The story about your dog? The dog bite oh, on his arm. Scoping. You and stores, you went out there to get this, this, this stuff? <clears throat> Let me roll some. All right. He gets the idea he needs to shut up now. He's like, <laughs> oh, oh. Shots? I'll go get shots. Good idea. He stands up. Walks away. So, since the retard's finally gone. Now, now, now. What? I call it how I see it. Everybody can't be bright. Glenn prefers the term Glenn. <laughs> yeah, I haven't met anybody else like Glenn, so that makes sense. Yep. It does make sense. So, what Maybe did... Maybe had one too many run-ins run with these dogs. These dogs. What did you run into, David? And where are our friends? <laughs> and I do that, that similar reaction that I had when I had a snort of... Um, Jerry's good stuff and and you know just that that cold shiver down the spine that whole <laughs> um, kind of kind of reaction and um, I need to know a little more about about you. And why you guys are here, talk to me. Like I said, I work for Sorge's dad. I kind of was hoping to be able to date her. And childhood, what friend, you... childhood friend of Jerry. I even remember his incident. Hmm. Um... What do you do for Sorge's father? Security. I'm also going to work, go to classes at the university for police and military science. Oh. Um, any chance I would have seen uh, Will on campus? Uh, yeah, sure. If he goes, probably can go there for you. Uh... Where's uh, associates in criminal justice from? 
<clears throat> oh, you're at the university. Uh, and you said criminal justice and military science. Military science. That's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't get over to that side of campus all that often. Uh, <clears throat> mostly, I'm doing my research down in the docks and. Yeah, swimming, scuba. In the water. Yeah, so that's how you know Sorge, with her little uh, sub thing she plays with. Her dad does cars. She does these little flying things and these little underwater things. I don't oh. know. I like the little yeah. cars she built. Yeah, the but little, they're little not. Car boat. They're not toys. Those are very useful things yeah. i mean i've heard of the military and the police using them so i guess so um <clears throat> i'm gonna interrupt for just one moment and just <clears throat> say <clears throat> can you guys just give me a moment i need to make one phone call i'll be right back Okay. And I, I step away from the table <coughs> and I find like the quiet part of the um, bowling alley, if one even exists, um, <clears throat> to make a quick call, phone call um, to, uh, to Stephanie to see what her ETA is and where she's, where she's at and what's going on. All right. <clears throat> um outside is probably the most quiet place but any like anywhere anywhere in that main area is probably around here by these tables all right i'll look at wreck and go what is this about incidents and big giant dogs it's like you guys are talking about magic or mystical stuff now oh he doesn't know <laughs> right my character hasn't had a weird incident well let's just put it this way for now um there's more out there than what you will po could possibly perceive and some of us have experienced it firsthand oh. and I, and also Rusty here, can tell when we meet somebody else that's had one of these incidences. Well, mainly Rusty. You cannot deny the nose of a dog. Are you telling me the dog talks to you? I mean, don't you talk to your pets? No, you're not they actually just a pet. Just shut up. They, they, shut up! They just... They just lick you and try to lay on you. They think you're most dogs think you're a bed. Th that's them and, talking or, to you. That's them talking to you, and just in the language in which they're able to, to to give. But the way you respond to him, it's like he's actually talking to you. I can get into a dog's head a little bit more. Okay. All right then. I'm a dog trainer. What do you expect? Yeah, I mean. I'm coming at it from a police security point of view. Oh, d trust me. I've trained a, a, a few police dogs and their right. handlers do the same thing. Yeah. Or as I put, or as I put in my character sheet, a kiss type of person. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Down there, no nonsense kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm beating around the bush, something fierce. All right, David, as you so get... That's why he's questioning everything. David, as you get up over... I'm just going to assume like this table area right here, where I just moved your tokens. That's kind of quiet. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'll, you know, make that call to, to, to Stephanie to find out what's going on with her. All right. This is probably going to be huge. I don't want it to be huge. But... No, there it is. Okay. You see Glenn is talking with Abby. I don't like how Abby's picture looks. Let's see how you are. 
No, it's fine. It's just saturation. It's crap. All right. And you make the call. Um, she answers. It, it rings just a few times, and she answers. Oh, David. Power things. They could be... Less complicated. What are we going to do with... Uh, the Monsignor's out here, too. Um, they're... You want me to just give them the keys to the boat and then find a hotel room or something till tomorrow? And they're asking about they're asking about Sorge's body. They say there's far more than what we understand going on here, and that this is a very bad situation. Many people could get hurt. And they're trying to prevent it. And they just, they don't want us to tell Sorge's family what really happened. I don't, I don't understand. They've, they've never been so, they've never, it feels, it just feels dirty to have them hear them to tell me to lie. But I got to say, I, I'm not totally against it. I mean, I mean, how could we tell Sorge's family? You know, they want us to say it was an accident. David is just in shock, <clears throat> just in shock because the words that came out of Stephanie's mouth, there's more to hear than, than you understand. It's a bigger picture than you understand. Exactly the words that came out of um, uh, the, 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 Abby's mouth to me prior and as I'm staring down the lane at Abby and Glenn it's like I'm getting I'm I'm hearing the same thing my brain is just absolutely firing randomly I'm having a hard time comprehending and putting stuff together um And what I'll ask, I'll ask Stephanie if she can have um, uh, someone from the church, either um, uh, either Father Price or uh, the Monsignor, um, come down to um, the bowling alley uh, as quickly as possible um, so that I can talk with them and uh, give them the details uh, that they're looking for. Um, I'm not going to use all of the, the names and such. I'm going to leave it kind of vague. All right. Uh, okay, but I'm... Uh... And, and you As should come with them. All right. You know, David, I'm even more scared. They keep saying something about about the dogs and the island not being not being the most dangerous thing in St. Cambion, and that you see that there are people out there that They're just far more dangerous and might even attempt to do us some kind of harm if we let this go publicly.
I don't like it, but I think I'm going to go along with it for now. He's been, as I said, he's been a close friend of the family. And he's, you know, he's never, he's never asked me to do something like this before. I don't know. I'll talk to him and let you know, David. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, when I get off the phone with um, with Stephanie, um, are Glenn and Abby still talking? Yes. I'm going to walk with rapid purpose towards Abby. And my intent is to gra- catch her by the arm um, as she's talking with Glenn and say, come with me and take her outside of the, the bowling alley for a second. All right. Just so you know, you folks down there at lane 14, you, you could still, you could see all this if it catches your attention. Like, it, But, uh, okay. So you start walking up and this is about the time Daryl slides a tray that has little, little plastic solo cup shot cups. And, uh, I hate those things, but anyway, um, it's like, did you seriously just give me this? Fucking, what happened to the days when a shot came in a glass shot? Damn. All right. Okay. Abby sees you. Glenn sees you next. She doesn't. She doesn't veer away from you or anything, but she does look at. She looks you straight in the eyes as you're walking up. She never breaks the eye lock with you. And I'm sorry, you just couldn't you say you grab by the arm and bring her outside. As I see, as she's, you know, as I see that she is looking at me and staring at me, I just look right back at her, stare right back at her and just do a head, a head fake towards the door. <clears throat> All right. She shakes her head and then she takes two of the shot glasses off the Glenn's tray and goes, I hate these little plastic cups. <laughs> and Glenn's like, but those are for Chuck Glenn. And she walks out as you head to the door. Um, Glenn's back at the table and is like, Daryl, we need two more of those. <laughs> Good and thinker. I look at Rick and go, our friend just left. I think we should follow. Yeah. Come on, Glenn. Let's go check on your friends. Uh, leave that asshole here. Okay. Glenn's still up at the bar. Oh. All right. Uh, y'all get out first. Uh, but I mean, David and Abby, you will get out first. So you're in the parking lot out there. It's... It is not in the wilderness, but it's outskirts of town, right where the forested area of Hollywood begins. So there's nighttime animal sounds and shit like that. Bugs, <clears throat> so bugs I, flying around the lights. As we as we step out, um, <clears throat> and our you know, and the door closes behind us, I look at Abby and say. You were right. You know what happened, right? I generally am right when it comes to this kind of thing. Well, I didn't know when we're out, when we get outside and can hear I'm not it. sure what to do about the girl. That's what you say? That's what I say. Okay. What girl? I don't. Who? Is she? David, right? That's right. I don't always see stuff, and I don't always see everything. I don't know how it comes, and I don't control when it comes. But when I do see it, it's generally right. And y'all can step outside now. Okay. And when you do. All right, David, you remember last time you got the Tweety Fingers around 
dabby so that you get that twiggy feeling again yep and when rusty gets sort of in the vicinity of abigail she's one too there's something about her she's seen some things might as well find out what she's seen right david y'all get up about the time where she says i don't see it all but what i do see is generally right is always right oh and what have you seen where are you going and when I see the, the other two come out, I go, oh, we shouldn't be out here. Let's go back to the let's go back to the lane. I to don't our table. think so. It's a little bit more I, private out here. And we don't you've been have avoiding, to avoiding. You've been avoiding questions. Where is Jerry and Sorja? They are supposed to be with you. Well, I already know where Jerry's at. And I can only assume that the Miss Sorja is the same. Abigail says, Sorja? That little girl that hangs around Gwen? Yeah. You know, there's not, not a little that girl, much, but. There's not much difference between Sorja's age and Abigail's age. Yeah, the short Asian <coughs> girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I saw her. She was there. And since David, you're the only one that came back. Two plus two equals four, right? Rick, you're very good at math. So it's time to start coming clean. What's going on? Phone rings. Ring, ring, ring. David's phone. <laughs> Perfect, Diary. <laughs> I look down and I, who's who's calling me now? It's it's Stephen. <laughs> I just shake my head and look down at my phone and go. I must take this call. Yes. Can I look at the phone and see what it says? Uh. I don't know if he has sure. Stephanie or Dr. Newsom on his phone for the contact. I'll tell you what, we'll let you make a perception roll. Because unless he's actually shows the phone out to you. Oh, I don't have it on that screen. Sorry. Eight. Um, he's not going to be a detective anytime soon. Yeah. Now, just so you know, eight would be a success score for something that was easy. So, right, eights don't. I'm just trying to watch the yeah. phone. Eights don't automatically low low roll doesn't automatically yeah. mean a failure. So I don't. I won't. Yeah, I was just trying to watch his phone as he pulled it out. If I had to readjust myself and stuff, trying to see who's calling him. Yeah, you you couldn't tell. Okay, like unless he held it out like. We gotta take this call. This is snobby, the call I have. To the snobby take. British person? Would he do that? I don't know. All right. Well, you want to answer it, or oh, I can't mute it. it. I I answer the call and I uh, I I uh, um, say that I I've got to take care take care of this. Stay right here. Don't go anywhere. I'm just going to stand over there. And I take three or four steps or, you know, like six or eight steps of, away just so that I'm, I can, I can, I've got some semblance of um, uh, uh, privacy, but recognizing that anybody really paying attention is going to be able to hear everything I say. <laughs> Abby's like, do I need to be here? Yes, you do, because you need to explain how you saw it. 
Rusty? Don't let her go mm -hmm. anywhere. All right. You answer the phone. David, I talked to... They, they don't. They, they say it's not wise to go to the bowling alley, but they would like to meet with us. Um, they say come in into the church. Okay. I have some things to take care of here first. All right. I'll call you when I'm done here. Okay, David. All right. She hangs up. Okay. And Abby is like, did you just tell that dog to watch me? You heard me. She's like, I don't think you know me. I'll and you sure as hell don't know in. me. She's like, I'll kick that fucking dog's teeth in if you set it on me. And you don't. I know just start Rusty. handling my pistol and go on my side. That that will will no need no need. Rusty will do just fine. <clears throat> and I will go wherever I damn well please to go. You understand me? Not and this if you time. You don't. I'll shove that fucking dog up your ass. I would like to see you try. She Miss. stands right up into your face. Cast me, motherfucker. Cast me. And like the fire from all the alcohol she has drank. Like burn your eyes. Abby. Back Abby. down, Miss. Abby, would you go see about getting a couple more of those cups from Glenn? We'll be in in just a second. Just telepathically. Hey, Rusty, bite her in the ass as she goes in. <coughs> All right. Remember, you asked for this. <laughs> okay. Great. Another mess I've got to deal with. <laughs> well, you don't know what's happening. All right, do you want him to, like, really, really bite her to hurt her or just nip her on the ass? Just a nip. All right. <laughs> he lands it. <clears throat> she turns around. And let me put let me put Rusty's token on the board because it's going to initiate. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fucks with Abigail. <clears throat> All right. Do 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 bean. Let me put this other picture back because right? that's her actual character. Oh, look, there it is. That was the right one after all. All right. All right. Did you want to be involved in it, or you want to just? Well, the familiar goes on your initiative, so just click and roll your initiative. Yes, it did. Oh, shit, I closed the damn thing. All Are right. we going to join in, David? You can. Now would be the time. Just remember to click your token. No, I'm 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 a I'm a lover. I'm staying out of this. I'm a foreign national who's already got dead bodies floating around me. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> so right. that was a sneak around. So the initiative starts now. She spins around and she is going to kick the ever loving fuck out of Rusty. And she has these huge boots. You got like these fourth inch thick tank treads and they got metal and chains wrapped around them. 
Well, it's a good <laughs> thing that a bloodhound is a hunting dog and is trained to trip people up. All right, so is that what you want Rusty to do, Tripper? Yep, as she's going for the swing, she's just going to go in for that ankle that's planted <laughs> on the ground and just pull it out from underneath her. All right, Rusty has a character sheet that you could use. Um, or you could just roll your uh, 2d10. It just, I didn't change the name, it just says Rick for more. <clears throat> all right he rolls or does whatever gets in the position to trip her but it doesn't quite throw her off will you see this abby is about to plant this like 15 pound boot into the dog's face i'm gonna knock her over and plant her on the ground Okay, go. Might. No, this is coordination. Coordination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost my numbers. All right, and remember, everyone, you get one defensive response per round. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Now, where does Rick go? If the dog goes, does Rick go at the same time? But he had gone. Rick and the me? dog share initiative, so. Oh, okay. Like technically, he could have rolled for him, Rick and not Rick's familiar. Yeah. Okay. So it's one or the other goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wasn't sure how that worked. Son of a bitch! I hate these dice rollers, man. <laughs> All right, she is too busy with one foot in the air to do anything. And you're just going to grab her and throw her on the ground? Yeah. You're just going to grab her and restrain her? No, kind of throw her on the ground and pin her there. All right. Because she's drunk, as far as I know. That was Will. And this is Abigail. All right. She's... Fuck off me! And she's like, oh, and she's surprisingly strong. This is going to be a might check, unless you have you could use athletics in this as well. So you can just make an athletics check, or you can make a might. Check I don't check. use a modifier with it though. No, it's going to be your might. Okay. It All right, so you got third. Okay, it did not add the athletics to it, though. The two from athletics. All right, so the character sheet roller is kind of crazy because really what you're supposed to be doing is rolling like it's a coordination action check, and then you add your skill to it if you have a skill. Oh, okay. But the character sheet is set up to where it's kind of in reverse, so this is something yeah. that we need to address later. But, okay. So plus right, two so, would be fifteen. All right. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm just gonna roll physical dice for her. It's gonna take forever. Yep. All right. Surprising you. Like, she is really strong. And she rolls you right off of her. <sighs> Rick slash familiar stone. Rick and Rusty. It's the Rick and Rusty show.
All right. All right, and it is a new round. No, that would be fighting. That would be fighting or coordination. All right. All right, Rick. This dude's about, this dude's coming up and is going to smash this, boy, this girl in the face. But he missed. As I roll over, I pull the gun out and point it at her and go, stop now. You no, know, you have no authority to do that, right? Yeah. Just go, just, okay. She attacked, she, she tossed me off. And now I have my own authority. Protect myself. All right. Okay. And she goes, what the fuck? A gun? A gun? You all a bunch of pussies. I'm one person, you got a fucking dog, and you're going to pull a gun on me? And you, you tried to me, kick my dog. You've set that dog on me, and I ain't done with it, because when I'm done with you, I'm coming for you, motherfucker. Did you hear me? Did, you, did you, you. you hear me give the attack phrase? No, you. because I didn't say a word. He went over there and nipped you in the butt because you were being a bitch. Then your dog needs to go to the pound. She's just like, you better shoot me, motherfucker. You better kill me. Shoot me and put that gun away right now. Is it still my turn? Yeah. I'm going to take a swing with her, but I'm gonna, as I do, I'm going to move the, turn it around, and I'm just going to pistol whip her. <coughs> All right. Strength or coordination? coordination. That's your coordination. Well, they're not sword, just dice. You just miss. All right, so you would have to step down to swing at her. I was on the ground. Oh, that's right. You were. Sorry. Thank you. All right. She just goes back, and she swings an elbow and trying to swing an elbow into your face. Okay, you can make your, you can, yes, you can make a defensive roll if you like as a coordination. A little better. Missed it by one. She plugs you. Bam! Right in the face. You take four points of mental trauma. Like Mental she, or physical? No, physical, I'm sorry. She cracks you in the face. Your nose starts to bleed. You might even have a loose tooth. <clears throat> and she, she starts to, William, William, these motherfuckers got a gun on me, William. All right, it's the the Rick and the Rick and Rusty show. She looks like she knows how to fight, by the way. I'm actually going to call Rusty back to my side. And back up. All right. All right. That's it. All right, Will. I'll roll on over away from her and kind of set the gun down, see if she calms down. Trying to, I guess, de-escalate de it. Uh, that's not going to happen, I'm going to tell you, unless you attempt to do some kind of manipulation to try to calm her down. She has the disadvantage of short views, and she failed it thoroughly. And so that means she is a, she is going to continue to attack until the fight is over. She's not, that doesn't mean she'll fight to the death, and it doesn't mean that she'll kill. It just means that she is, she is mad. And I'll make sure I'm part, out of immediate range. All right. Do you want to attempt to talk her down, or you just? I. It'll be an influence roll. Influence. And it's gonna be hard because you pull the gun. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't have any talking skills. It's just an influence roll. And it's going to be hard. Influence, influence. Oh, charisma. All right. You can tell she's seeing red. However, she's not in a combat. Or she's not in a position like she's going to the longitude. She is getting up off the ground. I'll look at her. I'll put it away, but we still need to talk. And I slide the gun back in the holster. All right. She stands and take up. Take another and, step back. She stands up and she's breathing heavy. She looks over at David and she's like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? You know, fuck all y'all. I hope I get a chance to actually go to sleep and watch you all die. And she starts running for the... Not running away, but walking towards the door. And she's saying, William! William! She's walking towards the, the bowling alley door. And stuff. Okay. I turn to David now. Will you please explain to us our, and answer our questions? What is up with her? Where are our friends? And what is going on? <clears throat> There's some really weird shit going down. Like people talking to dogs, her seeing things. Big giant dogs t attacking people. Oh shit! Anything weirder? <coughs> You've just described the most normal thing that's happened to me tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, on a scale, on a scale from one to ten. I'm at 22. When it comes to that kind of stuff, yeah, that does kind of happen. And I could help you out if you tell me what the hell's going on. Maybe I could do a little bit of research. I already know that there's some ancient Rick, things happening here. Rick, your math was spot on. I'm trying to figure out what Will's angle is. I want to know where Sorja is. Just tell me the truth. For fuck's sake, she's dead. Can't look at him and go, do what? And how would you know? And look right. back at David. Here's the thing. When I called David earlier, he let me know that my childhood friend Jerry died. And then he shows up here without Sorja. So that's the reason why I said two plus two. And he agreed. So, yes, she's dead. So I look at David and go, what happened? The horror. The horror. And who was the phone call with? The person you are working with? It's complicated. Was it the woman the, that that was that picked up your phone earlier? Yes. Okay, so All right. What kind of heebie-jeebie bullshit are we dealing with? I watched a house a house a building 
try to eat a man. Poltergeist? Like chomp, chomp, chomp? Demon possession? Eat? Or collapse and killing? Or what do you mean, eat a person? You asked me. Okay, yeah. What did the house try to do to eat him? That's what I'm going. Did it go like mimic and try to open up and start eating him? Okay, well, I'm just going to spill this out here uh, on you. A and believe me, don't believe me, I don't give a shit, all right? In this world that we live in, there are things that are out there that you cannot see with your own eyes unless they manifest. I.e. ghosts, demons, spirits, and believe it or not, Rusty is an earth spirit. So what do we need to get a bunch of priests together and go bless the island? They don't know how to do jack shit. David quietly takes a step away from Rusty. As I told you before, David, he's under contract with me. He is my familiar. We have a partnership. And he's even told me straight out that he's not going to harm you. He likes you. You so smell like you, us. You know, like, like witches of Eastwick movie and their little cats and stuff? Well, I'm actually a druid, so Wicca can go kiss my ass. The front door of the bowling alley bursts open, and Glenn comes running out. Are y'all crazy? No, but you're an what idiot. What the hell? You better go. This place is about to be crawling with cops. Not to mention, if they, if they, if William gets loose, he's gonna fucking kill one of y'all. She started it. Rick. I don't know who started what. All I know is <laughs> there's a bunch of cops coming. Rick, let's get in Ending your car. Ourselves. We got to go now. All Fast. right. You're in the back because Rusty has a uh, front seat. I'll get in my truck and follow him. So where are we going, David? Uh, we're headed to the dock where I've got the research vessel tied up. All right, so since it's just you and I in the car now, what in the, in the hell is going on? All right, <laughs> so y'all load up and start the car. And, and Glenn is just like, as y'all pull off, he's just like, what the hell? And y'all leave him and he drive away. <clears throat> All right. We'll give one. Uh, we, we are out of time, but let's 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 hear David's response. We are out of time, right? This is the time we usually shut down, I believe, right? Yep, we're about five minutes past. All right. So I'll make it quick, and I'll do the the quick recap, the Reader's Digest version of the recap, complete with tongue-tied stuttering and and hand signs and things like that, and try to uh, you know give um, Rick the story of um of of the um of jerry and sorja and the house and you know from my perspective from watching it on the screen of the house trying to eat uh uh vicar deacon vicar father v vicar deacon thomas um alive and then the uh the attack of the the dogs. I give an estimate of the dogs' weight at about three to four thousand pounds. Um, just to give a, a a reference on the uh, the size of the animal that we're talking here, uh, complete with the the three part harmony, the circles and arrows and paragraph on the back about the exploding dock and all the rest of that stuff. And then I get to the important part, which is. I'm a grad student who's a foreign national who just witnessed this. I've got a dead body 
on a research boat. WTF! Exclamation point. <laughs> Exclamation point. And the church <laughs> taking the other body. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I, I fill and in one the one body missing. Yeah, I fill the whole the whole story, the whole story in to uh, to Rick because I am. My brain right now is just, I, I, I'm no longer able to think, you know, rationally. I am just having a really hard time holding it all together. All right. In a debt, we'll call it for tonight. <laughs> well, that was entertaining. I'm interested to see where this is going to go. Nothing good is going to come out of it, I promise you. But <laughs> <laughs> it will be fun to see how it happens. I don't see nothing <sighs> happening. You got to be sitting, you got to be watching for my chair. <laughs> All right. So it ends with let's go ahead and make a note. Um, it is probably about. I'm just going to call it like 10 p.m. Tomorrow is Monday. Now, so in weird, you don't have to go to a job because this is not what this game is about. But you do have to, uh, the game assumes that you do. In other words, you don't have to role play your day at work. But you do have to try to live out your normal life because that is part of the game trying to live a normal life under these kind of circumstances. If you miss too much work, there's a chance that you could be fired or it will affect the amount of income you get per week. So, and I know that people do work on weekends, but as far as game mechanics go, I, I'm not, I kind of take the weekend to say, okay, they're off, right? <clears throat> so if you do do something on Monday, you will have to make some kind of excuse to like, other words, like David, no one's going to fire you because you're a student. Right. But if you right. miss, but if you miss too much of reporting in or too many meetings or something like that, it could start to have an adverse effect on your character's social life. Um, social he's a grad, life. he's a grad social student. Life. He doesn't have a social life. So, well, let me just your your domestic life. Yeah, you want to call I get it. Occupation, domestic life. And Rick doesn't have to worry about it because he's self-employed. And I just call her dad and say I'm investigating, which, <laughs> which is what I was told to do. Yeah. All right. So we'll end it there. I I hope everyone had fun. I know I had fun. It's a little hot mm -hmm. here, and I'm getting like red cheeks and all. That's crazy. <laughs> a, little, a little sticky in here. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday, and it's going to be Impossible Landscapes, and I believe they're actually going to play it tomorrow. Uh, if not, they, there was some talk about a Merc Bourguet. I found out that's how you pronounce that name, Merc Bourguet. I only know that because I watch, I'm a fan of the European handball teams, right? And the Swedish team there's a girl on the swedish team and her name is spelled mork but it's pronounced mark so and i'm like oh cool so there's a little bit of trivia for you and then saturday oh i'm sorry that's going to be tomorrow at seven eastern and then is there a game friday or is that saturday saturday uh, would be dragon or the dragon of, queen yeah okay horde of dragon queen and that's at seven no, that's at that's at noon. That, Eastern. Yeah, oh. noon. Eastern. That's at noon. Okay. And are they starting the Friday? Not yet. Never mind. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's going to be a game on Friday or not. But and then of course we'll be back on Tuesday, 7 p.m. with some more weird. Let's see how this goes. Uh, right now, I I don't even want to say. <laughs> it's getting weird. It's yeah. definitely getting weird. Yeah, I definitely got weird. That's when people don't know nothing about the weird. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, if that's it, then I guess Laura Thorne takes us away. 
Everybody, thank you so very much for coming out. It was a pleasure having you all here. And as always, stay weird and stay out of our dungeon. Good night, everybody.